A couple months ago, I made the decision to switch to NeoVim as my main editor after many years of using JetBrains IDEs. I started this journey by first using LunarVim, which is a great NeoVim setup that had all the features I needed. It really made this transition a lot easier for me. I mainly code in Rust, Go, and sometimes TypeScript with Node. So being able to switch between different projects quickly without opening up a new editor was a huge win for me. There's the argument that you can do almost everything that NeoVim does in JetBrains or VS Code by adding a Vim plugin. That's true, but it's not just NeoVim that makes this experience great. It's the combination of multiple tools that we use alongside NeoVim that makes this unique. Things like Tmux, FCF, LazyGit, to name a few, all come together to create the perfect and most productive work environment. Before I share my NeoVim config, I want to give you a couple of tips to keep in mind if you decide to also make this switch. First, don't try to learn everything about NeoVim in one go. Start with Vim motions, how to move around the editor, and how to navigate your code. Then look into new features as you find yourself needing them. The goal is to develop muscle memory and not to memorize things. Second, don't start by installing a ton of plugins. It could get very complicated and frustrating very quickly. You need to keep this process as enjoyable and minimalistic as possible. Imagine trying to teach a kid how to speak by first explaining grammar to them. They will not learn a thing and they will quit very fast. Also, Neven probably have some way to achieve what you're looking for without even installing a plugin. Third tip, Think of NeoVim as a mindset, not just a coding editor. Your goal is to make your coding experience as pleasant and efficient as possible. If you have to click around for 10 seconds to get to what you want, you're really missing the point. Fourth, try to stick to commonly used key maps when you start configuring plugins and other things. It will save you a lot of time by avoiding conflicts with other plugins. Now for tip number five, learn Lua. It's a full programming language that is embedded in NeoVim and it's what you'll be using to configure the editor. Make sure to think of it as a programming language and not just as a configuration file like JSON or YAML. You can create custom functionality with it and add them to your workflow. And finally, enjoy this process. It's common to hear developers saying that they've been using Vim for 15, 20 years or even more. There's a reason why they never picked or changed their tool. Once you get used to your editor, it disappears and it leaves you only with your thoughts and your code. You shouldn't be spending time thinking about how to use your editor, but rather you should be coding and thinking about how to solve a problem. As I mentioned earlier, my first experience with NeoVim was through a distribution called LunarVim. So now I want to show you some other options that you might want to consider. First, we can start obviously with LunarVim itself. And here you see it feels like a full IDE. And that's kind of the idea behind it as well. They say an IDE layer for NeoVim. So this is obviously a great option if you want to go that route. Next, we have LazyVim. And this one is a bit newer. And this is built on top of Lazy. It's also a great option. It has all the features you need and it comes with great defaults. Next, we have AstroVim. This one I haven't tried personally, but it does feel like it also have all the features you might want. And yeah, it looks similar to the other ones. The next one is NVChad. This one is quite interesting. It feels a bit more minimal and more like polished. It's just like the other ones, it has all the features that you might want. I think this one have some more improved colors. That's the way to say it. They created their own color schemes and look and feel. And finally, if you want to start your own custom configuration, there's this repo here called Kickstart. And what this essentially is, it's just a one file configuration for NeoVim that you can use and start your own, kind of build your own configuration on top of it. So it's just this init.lua. And they have some good documentation, good defaults. They use lazy for package management and they really set up and configure most of what you need to just get up and running. This is a very good option if you're, for example, moving from VimRC to NeoVim and you want to configure things with Lua. Now I'm going to walk you through my configuration. My goal is not to type things from scratch. Instead, I'm just going to show you my repository here and walk you through the code and some of the configuration that I think are quite interesting. And once I'm done, I'm going to show you a demo of how this whole thing works together inside of NeoVim. So let's start by going to init.lua. Here you see that I have mapped leader key to space and required key map options, other commands and plugins. So if you see the directory structure here, I have Lua, config, and I put inside of the configurations things like key maps, options, which key, which is a plugin that shows you some key maps as well. And I have this plugins directory and inside of the modules, I have the plugin configurations. So if I go to this init here inside of the plugins, 
Here you see that I'm using Lazy to install plugins. And the first two lines here are meant to kind of disable NetRW, which is file explorer that comes with NeoVim. And here's how I set up Lazy. I basically do plugins.modules to ask or to tell Lazy that I'm gonna put all my plugins inside of a module directory. So before I jump into the modules and show you the plugins, let's look into key maps. Here you see some of these things. I've seen them on one of the Prime Engine's videos. I think they're great ideas. And these two things are pretty awesome as well. So if I'm insert mode and I hit JJ, this is equivalent to hitting escape. I think it's quite handy, especially uh, you don't want to move your hands, you know. I think this is a very nice key map. Also my options here, I put them all inside of a an array and then I loop over all, all of them. This is a bit cleaner, I think. And for auto commands, most of these things I actually found online. I didn't really discover or do anything by myself here. I kind of learned about them reading around and I added some of the things I found interesting. So for example, this one, basically whenever I'm yanking or copying a line, this will highlight it before it copies it. I think it gives me some visual indication on what's happening. And here's the last one is also pretty interesting. So whenever the LSP attaches, meaning that I have LSP running, if I hit leader V, this will open up a vertical split to whatever function underneath the cursor. And I will demo this a bit later, show you how it works. Then I have some icons. I don't think they're going to render here, but basically these are some icons that I use inside of my configuration as well. I just pull them in and add whatever I want. Now let's go into modules. So I'm not going to go over each one of them, but some things to look into. So for example, alpha and vim is my dashboard. Buffer line is for like the tabs you see. This one here is my theme and I've been asked about this before. Basically my theme looks like a groove box, but it's not really a groove box. It's really this one here, but I have overridden some of the colors which I will show you in a moment. And these ones here will change the color and how the telescope, which is my fuzzy finder, looks like. Then I have Copilot. Then some interesting things I have. Uh, zero LSP is how I set up my LSP. So Zero LSP is basically a plugin that will give you fully configured LSP to your, your NeoVim. Now, if you look at my configuration here, you see that I basically just want to use these ones. I want to make sure I have TS Server, Rust Analyzer, and the Scopy LS, which is used for Golang. And the other one is also very handy. And here you see that I skip actually Rust Analyzer and Go PLS because I do configure this using their own plugins. So if I scroll all the way down, you see that I use Rust tools and I use crates for Rust coding. And inside of these configurations here, I do configure Rust Analyzer. And for Go, I also use two plugins. This one here, Gopher. And then if I scroll down a bit, you see that I'm using this Rayax Go for my Go work. And it has all the configuration you might need, and you can also configure your LSP inside of it, the server. Also, it's worth mentioning that there's another one called Vim Go that is pretty amazing, but I found that this one works better with NeoVim. Next, I'm gonna walk you through how I configure my debugger. So I'm using NVim DAP which is this one here. I have a couple extra dependencies here, like this one here, which will give me a nice UI for my debugger. And then we have this one here, which will show some virtual text next to the code you're debugging. And so to configure it, all you have to do is just say dap.adapter. You basically need to attach an adapter to this plugin. So in this case, for example, we have this LLDB VS code. I don't know where I've seen this before, but or what I've read about it, but I know that this one will work. I had it in some old configuration as well. And here's the actual configuration for it. So if you go down a bit, you see that I say dab.configurations.rust. And this basically tells this debugger that for Rust, use this one. And this is actually what I use. And the thing here is like for Go, I have this one here, which is called dab go. And this is inside of, it's actually installed here in zero LSP. So if I scroll down a bit in this gopher here, you see that I actually do install it through a dependency. And this just add a debugger for Go. Next, I want to look into Telescope, which I think is an amazing plugin. The usual, you pull Telescope, and then I have a bunch of plugins, which are actually extensions for Telescope. So I use Zuxide, which will help me switch directories super fast. I add some icons. I use the FCF native, which is going to be a C program, going to be super fast. This one here, Telescope UI Select, will basically allow me to use the UI of Telescope and other plugins. So here are some of the configurations. You have some defaults. By default, I use a theme called dropdown and then I will always activate or show the previewer. Then I'm always going to be in insert mode by default. I'm sorting ascending and this is the layout, the sizing of what you see. And yeah, so if I go down a bit, we have a bunch of pickers and you have to think of pickers as the different 
ways you can use telescope to search for something. So you can find a file, whether it's a Git project or not. And whenever I'm searching for a file, I don't want to see the previewer. I want to keep it as, as simple as possible because I've noticed that when I'm really searching for files while coding, I don't really care about previewing the file because I kind of know where I want to go. So I kind of turn it off for this search. And same, exact same thing actually for Git files. And the difference between these two is that if you're in a Git project, this will show you all the files, where if you're not in a Git project, you should probably be using this one. And to do live grep and search for text, the same thing as well, but in this case, I need the previewer because I want to see what I'm searching for. Now, this is for the buffer. It's going to show kind of similar to the same one here, like Git file and find file, but it will really show you like all the different buffers that you have, and you can pick one of them. It's an easy way to switch between buffers. LSP references is anytime you want to look for references, you can see them inside of telescope. So I think this is kind of a faster way to search for things. And this is pretty amazing, actually. There's another plugin called Outline, which will show you the outline of your file, meaning that it can list all the functions or this one does the same thing, but it's actually using telescope. And I found this to be a bit faster, actually. So I like it more. And here's how you hook everything up. You have this extension object where you say, we have this FZF extension and you configure it this way. And then the UI select, which is the one I showed you up there. That's how you configure it and set it up. And then once you're done with configuration, you simply load all these extensions and you're good to go. Next, I use WitchKey, which I believe is a plugin inspired by a feature inside of Emacs. So here I just have some default configurations, things related to the visuals and where I want it to be positioned. And then here, inside of this config, I basically register a which key configuration file and I point it to whatever the file is. And so if I go up a bit, you see here, the, this is the file, it's called which key defaults. And here I basically set up all the different configurations that I want. For example, for the buffers, if I hit leader key, I will see all the list and then I will choose whatever I want from this list. And the idea is that whenever you hit leader key, it's not going to show you this thing instantly. So eventually you memorize all these things and you don't really need to look at the which key layout anymore. I think it helps you memorize all the different features and also helps you not to memorize everything as well, because you really don't need everything all the time. One last thing I want to show you before I switch to the terminal is this FT plugin here. And so if I go to Go, for example, here you see that I require which key and add some extra which key entries. And the idea is whenever you add something to FT plugin, these things will only be activated if you are inside of a Go file. And here you see as well, as I mentioned before, I use Rust tools and I use Rust crates. So I have two entries here, one for each. And this makes it easier to add more configurations. For example, if I want to add things for like TypeScript, I can just add them here and I can switch them or activate them whenever I'm inside of that type of files. Now let's open up NeoVim and see how everything looks like. If I open up NeoVim here, you see I have a dashboard with some entries, some things that are very common between other distributions. So if I open up my Explorer here, you can go to a Go file. Here you see that my LSP is already active. So if I hit LSP info, you see that everything is working. And for example, if I go to this int and hit capital K, this will give me some information on whatever thing I'm looking at. And let's say, for example, I want to search for something. If I hit space F or leader F, this will open up telescope finder. And I don't have a lot of files here, but that's how it looks like. If I hit, for example, leader ST, this is when I'm searching for a string. For example, if I hit F and C, which is a func, here, how you see the preview and how you see the different entries. Now, if I hit leader and wait a second, here you see the different options that I have uh, provided through which key. So for example, I have my LSP, I have go, I have get, I have replace. If I hit L, here you see all the different functionalities that LSP provides. For example, let's try renaming something. So I have this value here. If I hit space, L and then rename, which is going to be R. You can see it down there that it says, give me a new name. So I can say, for example, new value, and it changes all the different value to new value. Also, if I hit leader and then P, and this is the one I showed you earlier inside of telescope, this shows me a list of all the functions in this case. This is handy because I can, for example, switch quickly between the two functions. And imagine you have like a pretty big file. This is going to be a very easy way to switch around. If you came from like VS Code or Sublime Text or something, this is something we used to have there where you can hit like Command P and it will show you kind of an outline of all the project and you can switch quickly by searching for the name of the thing. This is very similar. It uses tree sitter and telescope. Now I want to switch to a project that is a bit bigger than this one. And if I open up Vim Explorer, and let's just go with some file here that is 
a bit bigger than the one we had. For example, if I go to ETH client, so here you see like we have a, a good amount of lines and so many functions. If I want to see an outline of all these functions, what I can do is simply hit prefix P. And as you see, this will list all of the functions that I have and the fields and etc. And I can just type the name of the thing I want to go to and it will take me right there. For example, thing progress. If I hit on it, I'm instantly on that function. Now, if I hit, for example, capital K on this, it will show you some documentation. And if I'm, for example, on, let's say here, or let's just go to client. And if I hit J and then D, this will take me to the definition. So if I hit JD, I'm already on the definition. And here, for example, if I say space L and I want to go to the references, and for that I have capital R. And as you can see, this will show me all different files that references this specific word and it will show me that inside of a telescope now if i open up also now i can open up for example another file and if i hit space space you see that i can access all my buffers here now let's open up a rest project this one is ref which is the same project that we were looking at but written in rest we open explorer creates let's say consensus beacon source Let's just go to this file. And here you see to the right side that our Rust analyzer is running. It takes a little bit of time because this file or this project is massive. And once it's done, you see that you're going to see a lot of visual things here. So let's give it a moment. And there you go. Now you see our LSP running. It says three implementations. And as you scroll down, you start seeing some inlays showing. And yeah, you can do the same things similar to Go. So if I hit JD, you can go to this thing. And then space space, you can go back. And yeah, all the functionalities you expect from an editor you will find here. Also, it's uh, another thing to look into is I can, for example, hit space. And then you see that we have Rust and we have Rust crates here. If I hit capital R, this will show me some Rust related functionality. So for example, if I hit C, this will open the cargo file related to this crate. And yeah, if I go back to the original file, if I hit space again and R, and then for example, hit R again for runnables. Here you see that we can run sort of many different things. For example, I can run this test here and I can do cargo check. Now I'm back to my first project here, the Go project. And now I want to show you how to use um, DAP. So if I hit space and then we see we have an entry for debug. If I hit D, we need to add a breakpoint. So if I hit B, now we have a breakpoint and you can see it to the left. And now if I hit space again, D and then continue, which is C and then I can hit debug. Now the debugger is running, but I need to see a UI, so I can hit space D U, and that will open up the UI for our debugger. So now we need to move through the project or through the code to show different values. So if I hit space D and then O, which is over, you see that we're already kind of going over new, or going over different things that are happening inside of the code. If I do it again, space D O, and here you see there's even more things happening. A couple things, so here in this, line here. It is called virtual text. It basically shows you what's happening inside of this variable and it shows you the different values inside of it. If you go here, this side, you see locals. So for example, if you can actually click on these things, by the way, and it shows you what's happening or what's inside of the int array. And here you have a console or kind of a terminal that shows you the output. So it says one is odd. So for example, if I go over this again and hit space DO, see that we are seeing now two is even. And you can just keep going with this until program is complete. Now to exit this, you can hit space D X and this will close the debugger or detach it. And then space DU will hide all the different UI stuff. Now I still have to remove this breakpoint and you can do so by just toggling it again by space DB. Now, the last thing I want to show you is this file here, which is a very simple TypeScript file. Here you see that we have an LSP running as well. We're using TS server and ESLint. And now if you want to refactor, which is another plugin that I have. Let's say I want to take this code here and put it inside of its own function. I can hit space L and then T for refactor. And now let's say I want to extract a function and then I can give it name, for example, loop. And then here you see that we were able to extract this to a function. Also, LSP works the same thing here as well. So if I hit capital K, you see some information. If I hit GD, go to the definition. And I can also hit, for example, space P, and this will show me all the functions that I have inside of this class. That's everything I wanted to cover in this video. Thank you so much for watching if you made it that far. And I barely covered 10% of all the plugins that I have installed. That was intentional because it will take hours upon hours if I want to do so. If you have some ideas on how I can improve my configuration, please share them in the comment section below or even open a PR or an issue here. And if you just want to replicate my setup, just clone this repo and open up NeoVim and you should have the same exact configuration. Thank you so much for watching. Please remember to like and subscribe and I will see you in the next one.